Hey fellow gamers, here we have Zombicide Black Plague. I kickstarted this at the night level and because of that, as you can see here, there are tons and tons of miniatures. And so the challenge for me was figuring out a way that I could quickly paint these miniatures. And previously, I had talked about in other videos, basically spray painting things black and then just going over it uh, with layers of paint. That way I save time by not needing to put shading on, by um, uh, putting on a wash, and I can uh, make it speedier. But uh, there's another method that I wanted to try with the zombies, since there's so many of them, that might even be faster. And what I ended up doing with these guys was actually use the dip method, where you use um, actually wood finish and I'll show you in a little bit how I went about doing that. The other challenge with that too was Army Painter comes up with their own version of shading. Uh, I don't, I think it's called Quick Shade, but it was $40 for a can. And so I wanted something that was a little bit more economical than that and I found um, the Poly Shades at my local Home Depot or Lowe's and you can buy a very small can for eight dollars or the larger pint uh, or quart I mean for just thirteen dollars so I could buy a couple of those for the same cost of just one army uh, painter quick shade and so I'm really happy with the results and um, the other thing I did with this game to pimp it out was I actually made these walls and again I'll show you later on in the video how I made these walls these walls are made out of uh, resin, two-part resin, and what I like about them is um, when I'm done I can just throw them in a, in a bag like this and I don't need to worry about them breaking up because normally with my Hearst Arts molds I use plaster but I wanted to be able to just throw them in a bag and be able to move and transport them without worrying and that's why I ended up not painting them. Uh, I guess I could have painted them but I opted not to especially since I got the 3D a token set and because of that these broken walls from uh, the Obama Minotaur who breaks down the walls um, I wanted to, to sort of match and as you can see the colors really match well. The other thing that I want to show you that I pimped out the game with and this is sort of more of a tool is I use this pill box to hold all of the tokens that you use on the player board. Now, because I painted all of my heroes, I don't need the disc that goes on the bottom because the disc wouldn't fit in this. So this is just for the pegs that you put on your player board uh, and it fits it really well. There's 12 of them, 12 different colors. So uh, this two week pill box works super great. I have the uh, extra uh, experience sliders in one of the slots and so all of the slots are being used except for one. So this is a great tool to hold all of those. I also did buy the card holders which I found to be really handy. Uh, it came with four of them and I actually used the other ones as a discard pile and so I'm really happy that I made that purchase. Uh, I also bought the doors. Even though I have plenty of doors from Her Starts, um, I just went ahead and bought them. It was pretty simple and I just throw these in a bag as well. I chose not to paint them uh, for the same reason that I'll be able to just throw them in a bag, not worry about it. And so I'll go ahead and show you the video about how I went about painting all of these miniatures. So here's my painting station and the first step is to spray paint these guys and I did most of the zombies in this green color uh, as a base spray paint because of their skin. So if you look at the zombie that's supposed to look like Snow White. Um, you can see that oh, I don't have to paint the skin because the base coat is the green color. And I know this green looks almost fluorescent, but as you can see here, once you put the um, Minwax on there, uh, it lightens it up. But that's a good, I think a good zombie sort of green color. So basically this is just applying all of the flat color so 
um, this basic yellow for the dress, blue. As you notice, I'm not doing any shading, but just doing straight, flat colors. And I've done that um, for these zombies. And I also did it for this uh, Obama Alpha boss. Uh, I spray painted this guy white since most of it is going to be uh, a lighter color. Uh, and then I just went in with a brush and painted his um, clothes and little bits. But this was super fast. It didn't take me very long to paint this at all. Uh, and I'll show you what it looks like after I apply the shading with the Minwax. And with the Heroes, I base paint them, uh, spray paint them white. Uh, since their skin color is not going to be this weird green. So this guy, I painted up again, as you see, just flat color. So it's very easy. I'm not bothering to shade at all because, the, as you'll notice after um, that, the Minwax will go into all the crevices and will shade them for me. So this is why this process is so quick is because I only need to do one, really one coat of paint. So the Minwax provides all the shading and as you can see here, this is how it turns out. Now, see how these guys are shiny? The great thing about the Minwax is that it creates a protective coat. Uh, it's poly shades actually and I'll show you later the can, but it provides a polyurethane coat. Uh, so I can basically throw these minis around and you know throw them in a box and they're not gonna the paint's not gonna come off at all because of how durable the polyurethane is on there. Now because I don't want them to be shiny I will spray paint these with dull coat and that'll take the sheen off of them. So these guys are going to be the easiest paint jobs in the world, uh, the wolves, because you can just spray paint them gray like I did. In fact, I don't even think you have to spray paint them because they come in gray. But I went ahead and did a base coat. I'm not sure if that's necessary or not. And uh, I just stuck blood in there. And in a moment, I'll put, um, I'll paint the bones. But these Obama wolves, uh, I'll show you really quickly what it looks like to paint them. Um, I could just leave it all one color like I am with these wolves, but I want to make them a little bit more distinct. So what I'm going to do is put a lighter gray for where the skin is at and leave the fur sort of this darker gray that I spray painted on them. So basically, uh, you can be pretty sloppy with this job. I'm keeping this in focus. And so I'm basically gonna cover up the spots where there's mostly skin rather than fur. And I'll go back in um, with red around these open wounds. But basically I'm just creating a little bit of distinction between his flesh and the fur that he has. You know, only because this is um, one of the more tougher monsters, so I, I want him to look different than the uh, regular wolves. And as you see, I, I'm not even bothering to go into all the cracks and crevices. And these are actually the colors that I used on the Abomina rat. And he's drying, he's out in the garage drying right now. So I'm leaving all the fur um, darker gray and giving sort of a whitish coat onto his skin uh, so that it will actually be a little bit distinct from the rest of um, the pack. So I'll go ahead and do the second one, just like this one and then put blood on when this dries. And it looks like for these guys, really the only sort of open wound is this area. And so I just sort of dab the red in there. I don't, I don't really 
really see any other wounds on him. So I think I think that's the major area. And then I'm gonna put red around the mouth. Just for his tongue. And then I'll come back in later with um, white for the teeth. And again, not a huge deal if it's sloppy or you get it, you know, because theoretically they're chomping on people, so they should have blood sort of splattered all over. There, yeah, like that. So here I'm going to, after the red has dried, I'm going to touch up some of the bones with white. to do maybe the teeth a little bit here's the other one super neat there. all right now it's time to go dip them actually before dipping I will put a coat of black on the base now I'll have to do this um, after the dip dries um, because it will color the base but I like putting at least one coat on because typically I need to do two coats anyway so doing one coat before the dip and then an, the, f the finish after is sort of a good way to go about doing it you could just wait until the end and just do two coats later but I, li I like doing it this way uh, before I do that, I want to show you um, the brushes that I use because uh, I don't I don't want to use my nice brushes that I use for painting because um, I don't want to have to clean them and paint thinner. So these are basically one-time use throwaway brushes. I think I got this whole pack for like a dollar or two. So you can buy these really cheap um, one-time use paint brushes. So I get the really thin ones as well as these kinds. I don't remember how much this was because I bought them a while ago, but these are sort of craft brushes that you can use for glue or paint. And this I'll use uh, on this boss guy just to cover him up more quickly, but on the smaller ones I'll use the smaller brush. Okay, so here we are out in the garage. Because of the smell from these things, you have to make sure you're doing it outside. And I have antique walnut as my base stain and then this is espresso which is really dark um, so I'll show you why I have two different tones uh, and also make sure you get the poly shades because this is what has the polyurethane in it as well so you're getting a protective coat at the same time as you are um, putting on the stain so um, this is an example uh, I have a couple that I did yesterday that I'm waiting to dry completely uh, so this is where I put the darker espresso stain uh, onto these areas that I want it to be darker uh, and then I just used uh, this guy here uh, for the rest of the body and as you can tell this is a, a, the exact same colors as these um, but because of the brown uh, it makes it look like that in the end so I'll show you better compare and contrast afterwards but let's go ahead and do this now some people actually do dip their whole entire mini into uh, here, but I found that it's harder to control. Um, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and just use um, a brush instead because when you dip it in, you have to sort of like shake off the excess and I don't wanna do that. So basically I just use a brush. Again, these are throwaway brushes. Uh, typically with these size, I'll, I would use these smaller ones, 
but um, and I might need to resort. I'll go ahead and use the smaller one now. And so we'll go with the first one here, and you glob it on. And in the beginning, you might panic a little bit and say, "Oh no, I'm ruining the mini," but um, as you see later, it will turn out really good. So don't fret too much. Just sort of slather it on. Make sure you don't get too much on there. But you get enough so that it goes into the nooks and crannies. Sorry, I'm going to have a hard time getting this to focus on the mini instead of the background. And you sort of rub off in places where you don't want it to be. And as you can see, I have a glove on my left hand since I hold the mini with my left hand. I don't want this stuff to get on my skin. But see how it flows into the cracks and crevices really nicely? Just like you're doing a regular wash. But one of the things I found with um, using Minwax or stain is that it actually doesn't color it as much as a normal um, wash does. So for whatever reason, whatever is in this material, it allows for a lot of the color to sh still show through and that it really only goes into the cracks and crevices. So just make sure that you put it on everything and, and see the face. I don't know if you can tell. Um, the face uh, shows some uh, how the how it went into the cracks and crevices uh, helps out as well. But you can mostly tell it in the dress where it goes in into these cracks, and that's basically the effect that you're looking for. Uh, and just to compare side by side. So this is without, and this is with. So as you can tell, it really does provide a nice, clean um, shading. Uh, some people do go back and highlight. Uh, I won't do that because, again, I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. The one downside to using this is it does take 24 hours to dry, uh, which is quite a long time. So it's not like you can go ahead and pick up these minis and uh, use them. All right, looks pretty good. So I'm going to grab the bigger brush here. So here I want to show you something. So I went ahead and put the brown all over, but I'm finding that the difference between the skin and the fur isn't big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, use my darker stain here, the espresso, and go over the fur with it to darken it up. So here's the difference again. See how much more brown it becomes uh, when you put the stain on, uh, which I don't mind. So here are the results. They're dry. This is 24 hours later. And uh, I think this guy turned out really good. And it came out a little dark. So uh, what I decided to do is um, I went ahead and put sort of two-tone where I lightened up the paws and the muzzle and the ears so that it isn't so monochrome like this. So his skin is actually a little bit too brown for my taste. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush 
um, white onto him. So here's my brush and pretty much I'm gonna just dry brush here all of his fur so that it lightens it up. I think that makes him look good. And so basically all of these NPCs um, I spray painted different colors. So these guys who are going to be pr predominantly red, come on focus, um, I spray painted with a red primer. And so uh, that way I'm doing minimal painting. So after the red is on there, I'm just painting the black and the brown and the silver and that's it. And I'm pretty much done with this guy. Um, uh, headless Ned, uh, I spray painted with this blue, and then um, I'm not quite done yet. I got to do the black, but as you can see with these various NPCs, you very much quicken their paint jobs by giving them a primer, spraying them with a primer. That's going to be the predominant color in the miniature. So for this guy, it's tan, and even though I painted in, you know, all these other colors the biggest part I don't have to paint so I save a ton of time doing that. Originally I had painted this um, green uh, but realized that I wanted the robe to be white so I respray painted it white and then painted in the green uh, for his flesh uh, and then this is I spray painted her olive green uh, because her dress uh, is gonna remain that color and all of these bases I'm gonna make black but I wanted you to see the spray paint color that I used. And then uh, the dancer, because most, most of the dancer is flesh, um, I colored her what's going to be uh, the green of her flesh. And the dwarf, I actually spray painted a silver color uh, because he has a lot of armor on. And so what I'm going to do now is um, spray dull coats. And this is the best spray I found uh, to create a dull sheen on things that are too glossy. So as you can see, it's not glossy anymore. The dull coat did a great job. So right now what I'm doing is I am casting these walls that I'm going to use for Zombicide. And how I did that is I ordered this mold, this short wall mold. I'll post the number of this mold down in the comment section below. And I cast a couple of these, but because I don't want to cast plastic or resin in here, because it'll ruin these molds. Uh, what I did was I made a custom mold out of Mold Max 30, and uh, that way I can cast this in resin. And here it is right here. What I use is Smooth Cast 300 from uh, Smooth On, the company Smooth On. And you don't, you shouldn't buy a gallon of this stuff. You can buy um, uh, the smaller. How much is this? Uh, just a pound of this stuff, uh, and they'll send you a kit with both part A and part B, and you mix them together. And I'll show you in a little bit. But because I don't want to be pouring out of these gallon containers, I just pour uh, A in there and then B in there. And what I did because I want it to be gray, otherwise it'll be white. I also have some of this stuff which is just colorant and it's black and what I did was I put about 120 grams of part B into the cup and then added four drops of this and uh, these initial casts came out a little bit lighter than I wanted it's just super light gray and so hopefully uh, the current cast that I'm doing now will turn out to be a darker gray and I'll show you how it all works. So the first thing that I want to do when um, casting plastic 
is I want to put in some baby powder into the mold. And this is because um, typically you're supposed to use a mold release like this. But I found that when you use a mold release, it's really hard to get paint to stick uh, onto whatever you cast. And so a good alternative is just to use baby powder and it helps release the plastic from the mold. And you're able to get paint on there really easily. So the next step is to go ahead and pour. And I have a scale here that I can zero out the weight of the cup. And basically uh, what I'm trying to do uh, is with the part B, it's only um, by weight 90% um, of part A. And so what I'll do is I'll put 27, about 27 grams of part B. And then I will zero that out and then put in 30 grams of part A. stick and stir it up and you only have three minutes to work with this stuff so you can get a slower curing mixtures but I got the fast one so that I can pour these as quickly as possible Just want to fill them up just a little bit more and all the way. And this stuff does heat up, that's why I'm wearing gloves. Well, plus we're working with chemicals, and in general you don't want chemicals to go on your skin, but when this reacts, it gets pretty hot, and so you want to protect your skin against that. And then what I do is, you could just take a piece of plexiglass and spray, spray it with the mold release since you're not going to be painting the bottom of uh, the walls, but uh, since I'm indoors and I don't want to be spraying stuff around, I just grab a piece of wax paper, I set it on there, and then I use this piece of plexiglass to sort of flatten it out and push it out so that any excess that's on top can be uh, sort of pushed out so that you don't have a thick part at the bottom. And I can, I can feel it heating up already. Uh, it's pretty much good. And then I'll set my timer for 10 minutes. And we'll come back in 10 minutes. All right, so we're done here. Peel this off. Doesn't matter if some of the paper sticks to it. And then I need to separate it out. Pull them out like this. And then just peel, peel the excess off like this. Yeah, but I think it looks pretty awesome. And I might not actually color these because I like the color and, and then basically on the board, you can just stick these on here, like this, just to delineate the sections. And then you've got the little, little corners if you want to have those on there.